All right, guys, we are back today bringing you guys another commitment interview. And this one, hey, you know what? It went in the favor of Oklahoma. So we are excited here to bring Andy Bass on. But before we bring him on to talk about this recruitment and why he picked Oklahoma, I kind of want to talk about Andy Bass just as a prospect for Oklahoma. At 5'11", 200 pounds out of Heritage Hall, Oklahoma City, Andy Bass is a guy that not only can play quarterback, but he can play running back. He's a guy that could be a Swiss Army knife for you on the offensive side of the ball. So if you happen to end up in a position like you did last year against the University of Texas, you can always pivot to a guy like that to say, hey, we need you to step up in this position, and he's going to be able to do that for you. And if you followed the recruitment, you know, it came down to Kansas State, Oklahoma, and Syracuse, which – Hey, Kansas State, they've been giving Oklahoma some problems on the recruiting trail, getting in there on a lot of recruits that Oklahoma is trying to get on. So Oklahoma, they win this battle. They get a homegrown kid to stay in state and be with the Oklahoma Sooners. This is something Oklahoma fans should be excited about. So without further ado, let me go ahead and bring Andy Bass on the show. Andy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Oh, no, I appreciate you coming on and talking a little bit about your recruitment process and why you picked Oklahoma. So the first question that we're going to kind of just dive into is there are a lot of Oklahoma fans watching. We have a lot of them tuning into the show. What are some of the biggest factors in leading up to you committing to Oklahoma? Um, I mean, it kind of goes without saying. I've been growing up around OU, OU game my whole life, so – being able to play there is definitely something special and uh, can't wait to get to work whenever the time comes. Yes. And I know the fans are going to be excited to see you uh, get into work in an Oklahoma uniform. So exactly how are going, you going to be used at Oklahoma? So you're a quarterback at Heritage Hall, but like I said, you're kind of a Swiss army knife. You can do everything. You can use your feet uh, when you need to. So are you going to be playing a little bit of the running back position or just quarterback? Uh, I'll be in the running backs room under coach Murray. Um, but after meeting with Coach Levy several times, he mentioned me, splitting me out wide quite a bit as well to try to get me in one-on-one -on -one situations, get me in space, all that good stuff, and also playing some quarterback on the goal line as well. So super excited for all that. I think it'll be a really good opportunity to kind of showcase my skill set and, and all that I can do. Yeah, that'll be awesome. You're not as tall as Blake Bell, but we could use a Blake or a Belldozer package. I don't know if you remember that. That was a oh, yeah. kind of – the olden days, but uh, that would be exciting to kind of bring something like that back. So what went into the decision uh, of committing to a place like Oklahoma? Was it facilities, distance from home, relationships? I know you had talked a little bit about, you know, hey, you've just grown up, you know, watching Oklahoma and loving this program. But what else goes into making a decision as a college football recruit? Yeah, I mean, all those things that you listed are definitely some big reasons for sure. But, I mean, the question I kind of ask is why not Oklahoma? You know, the fan base, it's the best fan base in college football close to home. I know a bunch of people there. A bunch of my family went there. My grandpa played golf there back in the, back in the day. So uh, just kind of all those things tying together as well as, you know, the great coaching staff, the family aspect, um, just the talent of the team. I mean, it's really hard to turn it down whenever a place like OU comes knocking on your door. Now, where do you feel like or what do you feel like you're going to be able to bring to this team and bring uh, to Oklahoma on the field when you get on campus? Yeah, I mean, I've been playing quarterback my whole life, so I've been kind of bound to that one position. But being able to play multiple positions and doing all those things that I'm going to be able to do at OU is really going to be a great opportunity for me to, like I said, showcase my skill set. So I don't really think there's a limit to what I'm going to be able to do there. So, I mean, I could be more excited. Love it. Love to hear it. You're going to have to get you some brand or some shirt or something going on that has to deal with Andy Bass and a Swiss Army knife because it sounds like you're going to be used everywhere on the offense, which is exciting there. That's so the words, trust me. <laughs> well, kind of talking about NIL, that's kind of where my next question goes. So being from Oklahoma, you see all of the former Sooners in their careers. Uh, they've gone on to have extremely successful businesses um, or just extremely ex ex uh, successful branding of themselves uh, outside of just football. So what does NIL and staying in state mean to you kind of looking and seeing just how successful uh, former Sooners have been? Yeah. I mean, the Sooner community is, is a great one to be a part of. Um, there's limitless opportunities that come with being on the Oklahoma football team. Um, and I'll get my school paid for through NIL. So I'm super, super grateful for that opportunity for sure. 
Yeah. And I mean, that's something that maybe not every college can provide. And so that's definitely something that cool that Oklahoma is able to do. Um, and I'm sure you'll have plenty of business ventures outside of football um, as you continue to progress through your career. But Brent Venables, he's now in his second year at Oklahoma. What are your thoughts about where the program is going and just your thoughts about him as a head coach? I mean, there's a lot of negative things you can say about last season, but I think it's really hard to judge a coaching staff and a head coach off of their first year, especially whenever they had basically the whole team leave them and they had to build from the ground up. But I love Coach Venables. He's a great person. He always stays in touch with me. I can tell he is very, very passionate about what he does. He's always 10-10 on the treadmill, as they all say. So <laughs> he is definitely the, one of the most passionate people I've seen about what they do, and I couldn't be more excited to play for him. Yeah, and being a guy that's – he's been here at Oklahoma before. He knows the tradition and the history of the program. He's going to get this thing going in the right direction. Fans just got to give him a little bit more time. So kind of shifting back into you a little bit, what are some of your expectations for yourself here at the University of Oklahoma? Um, I mean, I know with the people I'll be around and the coaches I'll be around, just kind of playing at the best of my ability, um, wherever that is, helping the team out as much as I possibly can. So I think I'll have a great opportunity to do that, and I'm looking forward to it. Now, is there anybody specifically that, now that you're committed, you're going to be looking at getting committed to Oklahoma? Um, I'm one of the later guys to kind of join the pack. Um, you know, a, a few of those five-star d line like David Stone and all of them, it would be great to have them as well. Um, I don't really keep in touch with too many of them, but – Trust me, I'm going to be working on everybody that I possibly can to get and come and join me at OU. Well, uh, the fan base will definitely be excited to hear that. Uh, they're excited to get some of these guys on campus. So what do you want to say to your new fan base? Um, I could, I'm could. i going to give it all I got. I couldn't be more excited to join the OU football program. I know I'm going to make an impact uh, as early as I possibly can. So I, like I said, I'm looking forward to it. I couldn't be more excited. Not much I can say. All right. Well, hey, Andy, we appreciate you jumping on and we appreciate you kind of giving us a little more insight to this recruitment. And I'm sure we're not going to lose touch as you get to uh, Oklahoma. So we are excited to follow your journey and we are excited to have you be a part of this program. Absolutely. Me too. Boomer Sooner. All right, folks. And there you have it. Andy Bass is going to be in Oklahoma sooner. And this is a guy that took visits to Kansas State, took visits to Syracuse, but it's important to be able to keep these guys in state. And as you heard, he's not going to be taking a scholarship, but he's going to have opportunities to earn his scholarship through NIL. It was awesome to be able to hear a little bit more how that process is going to work and kind of just what goes through a recruit's mind. So now Oklahoma is looking forward to the future. What is next? David Stone, the five-star defensive lineman from Oklahoma City, currently playing at IMG Academy. That's Oklahoma's next target. And although he's not playing in-state, we still consider him an in-state target because, well, he grew up here. He grew up loving Oklahoma, and he's a must-grab. So you heard it there, Andy Bass. He's going to want to get a guy like David Stone on campus. It's going to be exciting to have him here. So, guys, if you haven't already, go ahead, jump down in the comments below. Let me know what y'all's thoughts are because I'm excited to – see what the future of Oklahoma football is. I know you guys are excited to see the future, and it's starting to look bright. With the commitment of Andy Bass, Oklahoma, they don't make a super big jump in terms of the recruiting rankings. He doesn't really move the needle a whole lot there in terms of a star ranking. But again, with a guy as versatile as Andy Bass, you know it as well as I do. He's going to be able to be used, and he's going to be able to help Oklahoma's class be elite.